a shrimp sheet pan pita. So I've got mushrooms, yellow squash, red onion, and asparagus. And I'm drizzling with olive oil. I'm gonna grab salt and pepper. You know the drill. <laughs> and then I've got some Italian seasoning, which is also kind of like Mediterranean seasoning, depending on what's in it. The, the bottle actually said Mediterranean slash Italian seasoning. So they're not exactly the same, but there's a lot of overlap. All right, and then I'm gonna use tongs just to stir everything together. So I scooted them all over to one side. And now I've got some colossal shrimp, which is actually known as U15 shrimp, meaning they're mm. under 15 shrimp per pound. And spreading them out, and then I'm actually gonna sprinkle just a little bit of salt and pepper on the shrimp. But this is basically the beginning of the recipe. And it's gonna get more interesting from here. A Little bit more Mediterranean seasoning. And then let's go get this pan in the oven, Paigey. So this is gonna go in a 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes or so. And when I put these in, I'm also gonna add some pita that I have wrapped in foil and it's gonna warm at the same time everything else cooks. All right. All right, while the shrimp and veggies finish cooking, I'm gonna make a delicious lemony yogurt sauce for the pitas. So it starts with yogurt, plain Greek yogurt to be exact. All right, so lemon juice and then a whole bunch of lemon zest. This is very lemony. And some fresh dill, chopped. So Paige, look at this. Mmm, can you wrap your head around this or what? Isn't that pretty? Okay, and then a little bit of salt and pepper. And give it one more stir. And then, you know what time it is, Paige? Let's go get the shrimp and veggies out of the oven. And the pita, we can't forget the pita. All right, check it out. Ooh, that looks so good. And I'm gonna grab the pita bread, which is nice and warm and soft by now. Mmm. Boy, it smells good in this kitchen. I love food like this, don't you? Looks oh amazing. yeah. Look at this. Those okay. shrimp are huge. I have a lot of things <laughs> going on. Well, it's colossal shrimp, hello. All right, so I've got some more lemon and I'm gonna squeeze it over the shrimp and the veggies and stir with tongs. And there's some juice in the bottom of the pan and that's just perfect because it makes everything just much more delicious and succulent. And then everybody can build their own and this is how you build it. Woo, warm. So I've got this delicious lemony yogurt sauce. So I'll put a nice, generous quantity in the warm pita and then a couple of pieces of lettuce and some tomato. Just shove in there as much as you can. And then I'm gonna start with veggies first and then a couple of these massive shrimp. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. They're big and beautiful and shrimpy. Big, beautiful, and shrimp. And then feta. Mmm. I love the combination of the roasted veggies, the cooked shrimp, the cool feta, and the sliced mixed olives. And then you've got that lemony yogurt down inside. Mom! I had to. I'm sorry. Ooh, that is really good. Mmm. I just prepped a bunch of veggies. Some carrots, I peeled them and cut them into chunks. And along with some red onion that I cut into big wedges. And I'm basically just making a bed of veggies on a sheet pan. So I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil over the veggies first. And add some salt and pepper. Very, very simple. I'll just stir the veggies together just to toss them in the oil. All right, those are set to go. So now I'm gonna spatchcock the chicken. Flip it over, breast side down. 
grab a sharp pair of kitchen shears and you just want to cut along both sides of the backbone. Now I'll flip the chicken over and then you want to press as hard as you can until you hear that breastbone crack. And then when you get it on the pan, it'll sit semi-flat. You can see how much easier this would roast than if you kept the chicken all together. Okay, now this needs a little more olive oil just to make that skin really sizzle. And a little more salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna get the chicken into a 425 degree oven for the first stage of roasting. It'll take about 25 minutes. All right, now we're on to the second phase of the spatchcock chicken. First thing I'm gonna do is sprinkle over eight whole cloves of garlic. I'm adding them now. I didn't want them to burn, so I waited before I added them to the pan. And I'm tossing them with the veggies. They're gonna roast and become so soft and luscious. Now spatchcock barbecue chicken has to have a great sauce. And this one ticks all the boxes. Let me tell you how to make it. It's apple brown sugar barbecue sauce. And I just added a cup of ketchup to a pan, along with a cup of dark brown sugar, a fourth a cup of apple juice, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, two finely diced gala apples, half a cup of applesauce to make it really apple-y. Then I added half a teaspoon each of smoke flavoring, onion powder, garlic powder, ground ginger, and kosher salt. I stirred everything together and cooked it at a simmer for 20 minutes. Then I pureed it until it was smooth, poured it into a container, and put on the lid. I'm gonna serve half the sauce with the finished chicken, and I'm gonna use the other half to brush on the chicken. I'll give it a healthy coating now. That is a nice thick coating. Now I'm gonna get this back into the oven for 30 minutes, and I'm gonna baste the chicken every 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna remove the chicken to the cutting board, and I'm gonna carve it. I'll grab hold of the drumstick and just cut the drumstick and thigh portion, put it on the platter. Okay, last bit of veggies. And I can't forget about this beautiful sauce. So there it is, spatchcock barbecue chicken. Lemon thyme sheet pan chicken and potatoes. So I'm making a little bit of a marinade to uh, toss the chicken in. So it's olive oil, some minced garlic, whoops. <laughs> the juice of a lemon. These are juicy, juicy lemons. Oh my goodness and then some lemon zest. I zested the lemon before I cut it in half. And then I have some fresh thyme leaves and salt, plenty of salt, and plenty of pepper. And then I'll just stir this together with a fork. Very simple. I'm using bone in, skin on chicken thighs, and then red potatoes that I cut in half, and sliced red onions, and then I put quite a few lemon wedges on the sheet pan, and those are gonna come into play later after it cooks in the oven. All righty, so this is all mixed together. It doesn't take too much, and I'm just pouring it over the chicken first to make sure it gets plenty of the juicy sauce. And then I'm just gonna use my hands to toss everything together and mix it. I don't want to leave them in sections. I want to mix it all together so the juices from the chicken will kind of coat the veggies and the onions and it's all going to become one. So the only thing you need to be sure to do before it goes in the oven is to make sure there's plenty of space between the pieces of chicken because if they're cramped, they won't get nice and brown. All right, let's get this gorgeous dinner in the oven. So the oven's at 425, and I'm gonna roast all of this for about 45 to 50 minutes until the skin on the chicken is gorgeous and the vegetables are done. Woo! Juicy. That looks fantastic. Wow. Okay, I've got a beautiful platter. 
So I was gonna just kind of dump it all on here, but I think that would be a catastrophe. <laughs> so I'm just gonna transfer everything to the platter. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, so now for the really fun part. Remember those lemon wedges? Here they are. They're now roasted lemon wedges, and watch this. Look at this. That wow. kind of roasty lemon. So fish the lemon out of here and just squeeze any juices that it has left. You can get some of the juices on the pan and just kind of drizzle them over. You don't want to do that too much of that because there's a lot of fat there, but boy, oh boy, that looks great. And then for a finishing touch, I always like to wipe the platter because dribbles bother me. <laughs> Not really. Um, I've got some beautiful thyme leaves and just kind of arrange it here and there and everywhere. I think thyme is one of the prettiest herbs. It's just so light and kind of slightly curly. Parsley never hurts, but didn't this turn into kind of a gorgeous dinner? It's really pretty, it's beautiful. And it's so simple. It's basically chicken, potatoes, and onions, but it's all kind of what you season it with and how you cook it, and of course, how you present it. That is one beautiful sheet pan supper right there. So easy, so elegant. There are a lot of arguments for five ingredient cooking. Less shopping, less prep, less fuss. And when you think about how quick and easy the recipes are, I am completely sold. So let's take these five ingredients here and turn them into my current favorite sheet pan supper in the Western Hemisphere. I'm gonna make a steak sheet pan supper. I'm starting by cutting some big, thick rings of bell pepper, and I want the rings to be really thick so they can stand up against the big, juicy steaks. You don't wanna do really thin rings because by the time the sheet pan supper is finished, they'll be a little bit soggy, and you want them to still have a little bit of crispness. All right, I'm gonna put these onto the sheet pan. And the cool thing is these are gonna kind of serve as a bed for the steak. So I'll get them on there, along with some big, thick slices of onion. Steak and onions to me are just a glorious combination. Okay, I think that's good. Now I've also got some cherry tomatoes and I'm gonna scatter them just throughout the peppers and onions. All right, so the bed of veggies is all ready. So now I'm gonna add some steaks, and you guessed it, they're going right on top. I'm using boneless ribeyes, and then I'm gonna season the steaks with just a little bit of Montreal seasoning, which is just a prepared seasoning. It always has a really nice steakhouse flavor. It's got a great texture. And I like to sprinkle the seasoning on first, and then I'll drizzle on a little bit of olive oil. All right, now after the olive oil, I'm just gonna put a nice generous pat of butter on each steak. Now the sheet pan's gonna go into the oven. The broiler is nice and hot. So I'm gonna broil it on the first side until it's totally browned. Okay, it's been about five minutes and my kitchen smells like a steakhouse already. Let's check out the first side of the steaks. Ooh, look at that sizzling steak. Oh, the butter really helps it brown a little bit quicker. So I'll turn the steaks over to the other side. You can see that they need some browning too. I'm gonna season the second side exactly the same way. Montreal seasoning and then olive oil and butter. So simple. Now when you make this sheet pan supper, you wanna start with steaks that are on the thick side. If you have thin steaks, by the time the outside of the steak is brown, they'll be too overcooked. All right, second round of butter goes on. So the second side doesn't take as long. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. And I'll probably brown it for another three minutes. You are not gonna believe how good this looks. Oh my, 
Look at those steaks, guys. Oh, so sizzly and perfect. The veggies are just the way I want them. All right, it's time to serve these up. You know, depending on the appetites in your house, you can call this a four-person meal. Or if you're like Lad and me and you love big, thick, juicy ribeyes, it's a dinner for two. The last thing to add to the plates, some crusty bread. The harder it is to tear, the better. I'll just add a big chunk to each plate. And I like to put the pan close by on the dinner table, and that way you can tear off little pieces of the bread and dip it in all these juices. So I'm gonna make the pancake batter in the blender, which makes it doubly easy, adding in whole milk and a couple of eggs, and then quarter cup of sugar. It's kind of a sweet pancake batter, which is my personal preference. I'm sure that surprises you. Baking powder right on in. I hope everything fits. And then just regular flour. Okay, I think I can get the rest of it in. <laughs> it's like a smoothie, but not. And then a good amount of vanilla. Okay, so I'm gonna blend this for 30 seconds. Oops, I forgot to add butter. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna blend it again for another 12 seconds. Okay, I'll blend it up. So I have a sheet pan smeared with a ton of butter. I'm gonna pour the batter into the sheet pan. I'm going to actually arrange fruit in three sections. So strawberries first. Basically the pancake puffs up around whatever topping you choose. Blueberries and chocolate chips in the third. Now I'm gonna put the pan into the oven. This is an oven, right? <laughs> I think so. And I'm gonna bake it at 425 for 25 minutes. It's time to get the sheet pancake <laughs> out of the oven. <laughs> now, don't be disappointed that you can't see the blueberries very well. They are definitely in there. I see them. Okay, so isn't this pretty? I just think it looks so good, but as good as it looks, that's nothing compared to how it smells, which is nothing compared to how it's gonna taste. Sheep pan macaroni and cheese to be exact. So I actually added two cans of evaporated milk to a pan, and I am sprinkling in salt and some dry mustard. Love the flavor of dry mustard in mac and cheese. I try to always add it. Some hot sauce, of course. For sure. Ooh, it's really heating up in there. So I have three kinds of cheese that I'm going to add to the sauce. I'm gonna start with the good stuff. This fine cultured cheese from the south of France, mm. <laughs> or not. <laughs> It's processed cheese from America. And then a cup of cheddar and a cup of Gruyere, which I think sort of elevates and cancels out the processed cheese. Don't you think, Alex? Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least we can tell ourselves that. And then I'm just gonna whisk black pepper. Okay, so this is the sauce. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> oh that should be illegal right there. <laughs> So, I've been boiling mac and cheese. And I'm sorry, I've been boiling <laughs> macaroni. <laughs> Why didn't you guys stop me? I don't know, I kind of thought about it. Oh, I love this contraption. You know that phrase, farm to table? Yeah. Well, this is pan to pan. Oh, baby. All right. So, I'm gonna stir this around, oh my word. This looks tremendously delicious. I'm just gonna let the macaroni sit in the sauce and I'm gonna make a cheese topping. So I've got the rest of the Gruyere, the rest of the cheddar, and Parmesan. All right, I got that topping mixed together. This is just a really cheesy topping. You can do breadcrumbs if you want, but I really don't think this mac and cheese needs it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that looks so good. All right, so come to the oven and I'm gonna show you a little trick, okay? I put this sheet pan in a 425 degree oven. 
about a week ago. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> a while ago. So it is very, very, very hot. And the first thing I'm going to do is just spray the bottom, just for good measure. And then, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my Look. gosh, it's sizzling. Sizzle. That's the whole point. And wow. then not only do you get that sort of crispy surface on the top when it bakes, it also like gets off to a good sizzly start Wow! before you even put it in the oven. So you know what's going to happen next. <laughs> it had to happen, guys. It had to happen. Cheese everywhere. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Oh, I love it. Baby. I love it. I love it. Okay. Back to the oven. Back to the oven we go. All right. So in it goes at 425 until the cheese is bubbly. It's going to be heaven. Whoa. <laughs> Listen to that. OMG, the sizzle. <laughs> I mean, there's no excuse for this. No excuse at all. All right, so you don't have to sprinkle anything on top, but I love a little basil. I'll never argue with basil. Look. I will take the first serving. Oh, Alex, <laughs> look under there. See, to me, this is the best of both worlds because I love baked mac and cheese that has a lot of like crusty cheese on top. And sometimes there's too much cheese underneath, but look at this. Sheet pan mac and cheese. Can I take a bite first, please? <laughs> I gave you life. Yes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I am making sheet pan quesadillas, but not individual quesadillas. This is gonna be one whopping quesadilla. I love this method. It kind of opens up all sorts of possibilities. I've got big tortillas, and I'm gonna make each one overlap and overhang. So I'm gonna start with four big ones and then two on the end like this on either end. Okay, so you see where I'm going with this? And then one right in the middle to cover the bottom. And then I have all of these ingredients to add. First, two cups of cheddar cheese and then rotisserie chicken. It's a great shortcut ingredient. Okay, for seasoning, good taco seasoning. Green chilies, just sprinklage. You don't even have to drain. Black olives, I'm kind of on an olive kick, to be honest with you. And then roasted corn, frozen. I let it thaw so it didn't have that iciness. I didn't want it to make the quesadilla watery. And then I'm gonna do spoonfuls of salsa. Just here and there and everywhere. Okay, and then the rest of the cheese, of course. And now it's about folding in the sides, okay? So that's one side. And then you pull the other ones in. Pull in the ends like this. Isn't this cool? Yes. And then to fill in this spot, there's one tortilla left. And then you definitely want to generously brush the top with butter. You take a second sheet pan and you actually press it on top. Bake 450 degrees, 20 minutes. Okay. You ready? Monumental momentous. Whoa. Wow. Look at that thing. Is that amazing or what? That's awesome. I'm going to use a pizza cutter because I think that's going to be the best method. Oh, it looks great. Yum. Oh my gosh, there's cheese everywhere. Look. Look at that. Oh, boy, boy. How good does that look? And then, as I am wont to do, I'll add some sour cream and sprinkle on some avocado. <laughs> I'm just sprinkling avocado at this point. <laughs> and then hot sauce, my fave. Use your fave, whichever that is. Look at this, you guys. And then some cilantro, sprinkle over, some lime juice. This is a game changer.